guys welcome back so in this tutorial we are going to create an epix class and we will expose it as in soap service and we are going to call this soap service from postman so first thing is you have to create the epix class so let's go to the setup here and uh, inside of the setup in the quick find write in epix and then it will go ahead and pull up this epix classes under the custom code so click on this epix classes and now you are going to create a new Apex class. So let's go ahead and click on the word new here. And then you're going to write that Apex class. So the first thing which we're going to do is we are going to call this class with the keyword global. If you remember the rules that we discussed in the previous tutorial, you have to use the global keyword with the class. And then you also with the method that you want to expose, you have to use the uh, keywords like web service and make the method as static so then the next thing is global then we are going to say class and then let's say we call this as student soap service this is the name of the class and then inside of this class i'm going to define a method and we will call this method with the keyword web service so we are going to say web service. This is the keyword that you have to use and the method needs to be static. And we will, this method is going to return a student record. Okay, so this is going to return a student record. And then the name of the method, we'll call it as get student. And this method takes in one parameter of the type string and uh, we will go ahead and pass in the id of that student okay so this is going to be the id and based on that id it is going to return you the student record so this method takes in one parameter of the type string and which is basically the student id and then this method returns a student record now inside of this method all we are doing is we are doing in select query select and we are going to query the id field and then let's say we also wanted to know what's the name of the student that is another thing i wanted to uh, find and then i also want to know the phone number of the student so i'm going to say phone number underscore underscore c then i also want to know which school is he studying okay so this is going to be the school will be returned the id of the school and if you wanted to capture any other information, let's say I wanted to also capture the email. So we'll go ahead and say email from what is the object name from the student underscore underscore C. This is the custom object that we have created where where ID is equals to whatever you have provided in the call, the student ID. So this is going to be the select query I have written. Now this select query is going to return me a student record so i'm going to capture the result of this query inside of this variable called student and then all i'm going to do is i'm going to in the next line i will just return this student record back that's all i'm going to do i'm going to return the student record now this is what we have done we have created a student soap service inside of the student soap service we have defined a method called get student now this method takes in one parameter of the type string and we are passing in the ID of the student. And then inside of that method, all I'm doing is I'm doing a simple query and I'm fetching the information of that student. I'm fetching the student name and the ID of the student, the phone number, school he's enrolled in and the email address where the ID matches whatever you have provided. So this is the Apex class that we have created and we have exposed it as a soap service now how are you going to call this class from our postman so how are we going to do it let's take a look at it so the first thing is since it's been a while i'm going to authenticate myself and i will retrieve the session id now the next thing is i'm going to make another request here and i will be past making a post request and the url is going to be this is going to be the URL services soap and then here I'm going to say this and I'm going to say classes now so class and what is the class I wanted to call so if you go back to your apex this is the name this is the service that I'm going to call so I'm saying student soap service and then I'm going to pass in the header so the first header would be the 
content type this is what we're going to pa pass and it's going to be text slash xml because it's a soap service and the second thing would be a soap action and this is just going to be an empty string now what about the body it's going to be of the type xml and then i have just to save time i've copied it over here and then paste it and one thing you have to do is you have to replace the session id with the one that you have just got from here i'm going to copy the session id because this is the one that will be required by the salesforce to authenticate okay so this is the session id and then inside of the body what i'm doing is if you look at it i'm calling the get student this is the name of the method right so inside the body what i'm going to do i'm going to say get student and then i will be passing in so this is the close this get student and what do i need to pass i need to pass the id of the student so what is going to be the id this is the id so this is the same exact name i need to use here so i will say student id and which student i wanted to fetch the information so let's say i want to fetch the information of this student and uh, i'm going to pass in the id of the student and then i'm going to close this because my web service requires couple of things my web service is requiring me that i use this is the method because how you're going to discriminate if inside of the student soap service if there is another method that you want to call right so how are you going to do that so in order for me to differentiate they are going to say we are going to use that method name that we're interested in and what that method name requires so if you remember this method requires one parameter of the type student id and this is exactly the name you have to use you can't use anything else so this is the parameter name and that's what we are providing and this is the id of the student and then i'm going to go ahead and hit the send here uh, what's going to be the response let's take a look at it so it went fine the status came as 200 which is good and now it is returning you all the information about this student. So you can see here, if you go back and you can verify it with the with the Salesforce, you can see Rahul Khanna. This is his phone number. This is his email address. And this is the address. So all that information is returned from that query that we wrote inside of the Apex class. Now, another point you have to see here is if I go ahead and change this Apex class. And then if I'm changing the parameter value the name of the parameter from student id to student std id then what will happen is if you try to run the same thing i have to change it in the query as well because it didn't recognize so now you're able to save it okay it went fine now if you're trying to call this from the postman you're going to see it's going to throw you in an error and it is saying no such parameter student id defined for the operation so what you have to do here is you have to actually change it std id and then it will work now because you have changed the name of the parameter so you have to change it over here as well so now if you go ahead and do the send this will work fine it worked like a charm now the next thing is if you simply change the operation also let's say instead of calling it as get student you can say it as get student by id and if you hit the quick save here so the class got saved everything is saved now the next thing is if you try to call this again it's going to give you a message saying no operation available for this request because it tried to look for get student and it did not find that get student method inside of your apex class so it has to exactly match so now i have changed it to get student by id so i have to use the same exact operation here as well so i have to call it as get student by id and close it with the same tags and then hit the send button now the request went fine and it returned you back the response so this is how you create a custom soap service and you expose your class as a soap service and this is the way you call it from postman now we're going to go ahead and save this so we'll call this as custom student soap service and we will save it inside of this collection okay this is one just to keep the record 
So this is how you create a SOAP server. Thank you.